Belief is a landmark on the road to knowing. Big up to my man Snake Jones 19 on that quote. He dropped that on me a couple weeks ago and I just had to write it down. That is quite the quote. So today we will be rehashing a uh, medley of beliefs throughout history, culture, and time. We uh, will be tying all of these uh, grand stories back into the uh, Electric Universe uh, cosmology and the story of a brown dwarf consisting of many planets in a column an axial alignment and they're interfacing with uh, a older system of the heliosphere and at this point uh, we are uh, probably we've already well, we will be dealing with uh, out of chronological order. Um, you know, I believe that the deluge, the uh, the flood, was uh, an event, an actual factual event that happened on more than one planet. Um, I entertained the uh, the notion that. You know, that uh, the flood and the waters of the sea, they come from Saturn. Uh, you know, and I don't depend on NASA for very much information, but they have recently confirmed that the isotropic consistency of Saturnian waters and all of its moon, with the exception of, I believe, Daphne, is the only one that does not have identical uh, water, to the waters of the oceans of Earth. And uh, so I hold to the possibility that there was life on Mars uh, when we were in this uh, columnal axial alignment and that that life on Mars was repainted, was spilled, that <laughs> was spilled down onto Earth and that now the, on Earth there has been a, a convergence of the races, um, of the genetics, of the genes, you know, the, the whole concept of enmity between the seeds, which is a biblical term, you know, these are the seeds, and there is enmity between them. Those are the forces that keep us separate, and the forces that caused many collisions and marks on these, uh, these large bodies. So, um, if anybody watches the most recent uh, Noah the movie of Noah and Noah's Ark. Uh, I believe that, that uh, the story of Noah took place on Mars. And I have many reasons to believe that. And they are signaling it. They are putting archetypes in the movie. You know, when Noah looks on the ground and a drop of rain sprouts a flower before his eyes. The flower has five petals. And that is the, the Venus. That's the symbol for Venus. Venus creates a spirographic pentagram uh, every eight years in the sky. Uh, the term Pennsylvania is uh, twilight speak. They are speaking of the penciling, the spirographic pentagram that Venus creates. Um, even the story of uh, Solomon casting 72 demons into a barrel, throwing it into a dark ocean, uh, that barrel full of 72 demons is the pentagram. 72 is the number of the pentagram rolling in the ocean. That is the spirographic uh, barrel full of Hmong keys, Solomon's keys, the keys of Solomon. Um, all of those, all of the myths have uh, deep, deep levels of truth to them. Uh, but I'm getting off, off track here. <laughs> uh, so on our road to knowing, we will be uh, perusing through many beliefs. Uh, I want to talk about the cult of Mithra. The cult of Mithra, uh, they have uh, two depictions. They have the depiction of Mithra slaying the bull, and they have a depiction of Mithra being slayed by the bull. And uh, there's that by the bull. <laughs> um, and what that is depicting, I believe, is 
uh, the story of Venus uh, in, on a collision course to Earth, and Earth being uh, protected by a hero, a grand hero. And Mars is the hero that saved Earth in that story. As Venus was careening uh, uh, on her way to make an impact, uh, I believe she may have been the um, it, she may have been the core of Jupiter. She may have been the solid center of Jupiter. And she uh, erupted. She had a birthing. She came out of the head of Zeus and uh, began a collision course towards Earth. And uh, just as she was uh, about to collide into Earth, um, Mars was compelled by some unknown force I, you know, I, you can call it what you want to call it. Something saved our ass. And Mars was used as a shield uh, to protect us against the incoming impact of Venus. And in that process, I do believe there was quite the mix-up of uh, cosmic bodies. Uh, I, th I think that, and so, this story might be told from the perspective of Mars and from the perspective of Earth. And that would be why the Mithra story, one of them is a miss and one of them is a hit because it did impact uh, Mars, but it did not impact Earth. And that's why they preserve both of the stories. And the stories seem to be a contradiction of one another. Uh, but the truth is that it's the amalgamation of two different world cultures. And the one culture came from Mars. They are uh, obsessed with fighting, Ares, war, Rome. Uh, they are conquerors, and it has everything to do with the grand trauma of their planet being completely annihilated and destroyed. That's what Olympus moms. That's why Mars is the marked planet. Uh, also, dread. Uh, excuse me, Deadpool. Deadpool is a uh, embodiment of the archetype of Mars. So when that happened, uh, there was a grand deluge. The salt water of Saturn ruptured. Um, the grand unveiling, it was the loss of the uh, Purple Dawn. And, you know, this also goes ties into the story of Adam and Eve. When they realize they are naked and they feel vulnerability for the first time. Uh, that is the loss of this Purple Dawn, the shield of the brown dwarf. And their ability to look out and see a bigger picture, a much bigger picture. And they entered into suffering and lifetimes began to shorten over time. Uh, that is because they were entering into the heliosphere and into this construct of uh, time. Uh, so uh, I got to plug on. I know we are uh, committing high blasphemy by crossing our cultures and our stories and our myths, but if you know them all, uh, then you are on the road to knowing. So, Samson and Delilah is a very good story. Uh, you know, uh, Samson was a strong hero, and he lost his hair. Mars lost its hair. Ares, the air was stripped off of Mars, and it became a dead body. Uh, so Samson was Mars, the strong hero. Delilah is the star of Venus uh, as a cometary body, uh, ripping away the air off of Samson. And uh, conceivably, I mean, I know I'm going all over the place, but I think that uh, there was a moon that was transferred. I think Noah's Ark is the story of a moon that once was a satellite of Mars and was transferred over to Earth in this, uh, in this exchange, in this grand collision. All of this goes back to Velikovsky's World's End Collision story uh, and the Thunderbolts project. Uh, there is so much more to know. I am just scratching the surface. Get it? Scratching the surface. So, Eros Gamos, I know I've talked about this a lot. It's about a sex ritual where the participants embody the gods in 
uh, in intercourse. And Eros Gamos is sometimes uh, in our movies. Our characters on the screen will uh, in, will embody these dynamic shifts of these power constructs. And uh, oftentimes, one thing that you can know that you're seeing Eros Gamos will be when you see symbols of the five by five magic square of Mars mixed with the five by, or seven by seven magic square of Venus. And I went over some of that with the tarot work, but if anybody remembers uh, my piece that I did on the um, Star Spangled Banner, we had five V's, uh, which is five by five, uh, five V's. That is actually Mars. That's the magic square of Mars. But when you put five V's together, you end up with a pentagram which is Venus. Five V's makes Venus. It also encodes the magic square of Mars. So here you have Heros Gamos, the, the lovemaking of bodily, of heavenly bodies of the gods, the male and the female uh, coming together and creating what we know today as Earth. And the word repent, it means to repaint. And in the Bible, uh, you know, God wanted to reset. He wanted a grand reset. And a lot of people uh, believe that this, these collisions were an attempt at restarting uh, the, the master plan. And it all was a fall of angels coming down to earth uh, in an amalgamation of forces, uh, something of a masterful uh, chemistry project. Sulfur, mercury, salt. Anybody who knows anything about alchemy knows what I just said. We got the salt water of Saturn washing over, repainting all of the systems, and uh, sulfur and mercury uh, mixing in the cauldron of life. So I got a plug on. I know that's a lot all in a little, what is it, 15 minutes here? So the Olympus Mons, that is the, uh, the scar on Mars. That is the curse of Cain. Cain was marked. And anybody who would offend Cain would be sevenfold their, uh, their offense would be repelled back onto them sevenfold. Well, sevenfold curse, that is a seven by seven magic square of Venus. And Venus did accost Mars and now is, has a curse, the pentagram, uh, and the 7x7 seven seven magic square uh, signifying Venus. wanted to talk about the color blue and green. You know, in the Odyssey, they speak of a world where the oceans were not blue. Uh, they were uh, burgundy, they were purple. You know, and this ha may, have, this may be, have been told from the perspective of Mars. Or it may have everything to do with this purple dawn. And the fact that there were no blue skies because they were still inside the brown dwarf. Um, so I just find it really profound that the Odyssey speaks of an odd sea. It would be very odd to see an ocean that was not blue. A world with different colored oceans. Um, and one more, you know, biblical point here is after the great flood of Noah, he looks to the sky and he sees a rainbow. And the rainbow uh, is a covenant between Noah and God that the flood will not happen again. And in fact, some say that it will, the next deluge will be one of fire. That the fire will be the next catastrophe. And so the, uh, the changing of colors, the changing of the color spectrum and the rainbow, all are signifiers of prophecy, of the changing of an age, a changing of the entire construct, a grand chemistry experiment, <laughs> a cauldron, a mixing pot. Uh, so just pointing out that, you know, this is the Roy G. Biv of our color spectrum. And green is the center color. It is the keystone. It is the, uh, the, the new beginning. And I do believe that after this deluge, after the, uh, the chloride and the salt waters, of uh, Saturn washed over Earth 
and uh, reconfigured the entire nature of reality. I believe that green uh, became a prominent color in our color color scheme, in our even in our visual field, our ability to see green uh, became possible. And anybody who studied art uh, in depth will tell you that in Egypt, Egypto history, the color blue is one of the newest colors added to the color spectrum of art. And that uh, blue jewelry was very rare. It was coveted. Um, and also in Christian uh, mysticism, Venus is, uh, excuse me, the Virgin Mary is depicted as blue. They preserve the color blue for her. It's royal. It's very sacred color. So I believe that the entrance of green uh, was into our color spectrum, our, our ability to see was uh, part of the reason why blue is so pres well preserved, considered new. Uh, and now green dominates. Everything you look at is green. Green leaves, uh, greenery, the green man, you know, Peter Pan, uh, all has to do with a bit of a chemistry experiment uh, from the ages gone by. And one last point is this, you know, we could get into infrared and ultraviolet. Uh, that's a kind of a getting into uh, David Icke's territory. But I just want to say this, you know, let there be light was the foundational, those are the beginning words of existence. Let there be light. And whenever I see that word let, um, I cannot help but believe we are getting some real deep indicators of the very beginning of existence. And violet is the foundational color at the bottom of the rainbow. Uh, and I'm not going to go too in-depth there. I just want to point out that it is significant. It is the first word of the Lord in the Bible and it is nothing to overlook for sure on your road to knowing. That's all for this one, folks. I want to move on to some uh, way left field material. So I hope you're digging it. Shoot me some comments. Give me the thumbs. Much love, y'all. Strength.